In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you all. Amen. And the top of the morning to you all now. I know you hate that every year. This great feast of St. Patrick, that great Englishman, who helped, well, in his day, helped to bring the very edges of the world to Christianity. My friends, let's prepare ourselves for calling to mind our sins, for calling to mind God's promise of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, we've sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners like us. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you sent St. Patrick to preach your glory to the people of Ireland. By the help of his prayers, may all Christians proclaim your love to all mankind. We ask this for Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as prophet to the nations. I said, Our Lord, look, I do not know how to speak. I am a child. The Lord replied, Do not say, I am a child. Go now to those to whom I send you, and say what I have command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to protect you. It is the Lord who speaks. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and said to me, There, I am putting my words into your mouth. This is the word of the Lord. The response to each verse of the psalm is, Go out to the world and proclaim the good news. Go out to the world and proclaim the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim you, all you peoples. Go out to the world and proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us. He is faithful forever. Go out to the world and proclaim the good news. <clears throat> the second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly to the Jews. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first, but since you rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this, and they thanked the Lord for this message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Stand to read the gospel. Praise to your Christ. King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord appointed seventy two others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to all the towns and places he himself was to visit. He said to them, The harvest is rich, but the labourers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send labourers to his harvest. Start off now, but remember, I'm sending you out like lambs and wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first word be peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, he will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer. For the labourer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, 
eat what's set before you. Cure those who are sick and say, The kingdom of God is very near you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not make you welcome, go out into the streets and say, You wipe off the very dust of your town that clings to your feet and leave it with you. But be sure of this, the kingdom of God is very near. I tell you, on that day, it will not go as hard as Sodom is without town. The 72 came back rejoicing. Lord, they said, even the devil submit to us when we use your name. He said to them, I will Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Yes, I will give you power to tread on the foot serpents and scorpions and the whole strength of the enemy. Nothing shall ever hurt you. Yet do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Rejoice for them that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. <coughs> it's obvious why we chose this gospel reading for today. Our Lord says here, I've given you power to tread on foot serpents and scorpions and the whole strength of the enemy. Ah, we know the tradition of St. Patrick um, driving all the serpents and snakes out of Ireland. And the shamrock and everything else, three in one, one in three. And the trouble is, with these layers of what? These layers of story on top of the man's life, it obscures the fact that he was a real, living, flesh and blood human being. And the story that the scholars have come up with recently is fascinating. The time he was born, he was born round about, they reckon, 390. And at that time, England, Britannia, was totally part of the Roman Empire. It's as far away as that. He was in his 20s before the final troops actually left Britannia. We have letters from 410 to the Emperor pleading for troops because all the barbarians from Holland and Germany, it of course, um, were trying to invade the south coast. But Patrick spans this period where the Romans had been here, totally Christianized, totally Romanized country, and then living a long life, died around about 460, at the age of 70 or 80, down for Lydia to those days. And the story, of course, of his capture and his going to Ireland. Now, again, the scholars look at his own writings and put that together. He's an educated man, he can speak Latin and probably the English. Celtic that was spoken at the time. He's a valuable slave. He's not just tending the pigs. He can read and write. He also put these things together because his is a real life. And so he's taken to Ireland as a prize captive. And they weren't swinging through the trees then. They weren't just living in caves. They were, they were at that time a civilised people, and here's the rule, who'd heard of Christianity. Everyone had heard of Christianity. It's only across the Irish Sea. There's lots of comings and goings and trade and cattle and slaves and all kinds of contact. They'd heard of this new religion, but they rejected it. It wasn't for them, not for us. Patrick is part of the process of Christianity being spread to people who thought they had already heard about it. It didn't appeal to them. And they rejected it as of no interest to them. If you like, it's a story of Christianity ever since. Syria, God help us, where Christians are being wiped out. Our own society, where in a lesser way, they think they've heard the Christian message. It's not for us, not, they're not interested, it's not for us. Times are so similar, you see. But God can use even individual people, as St. Patrick was an ordinary, living, breathing, individual person. And he can put them in situations in which they have a, can have a great effect on society. And what I'm going to say is very obvious. It's the same with us and our children, as individual, particular, real, living, flesh and blood people. God could.
can use us to spread the gospel, even in societies that if they've heard of Christianity, know its message, it's not for them. Look at Ireland now. Look at Ireland then. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and the human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Let us be And the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Humble and so to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. <laughs> Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you. Humble and contrite. Lord, wash away our many iniquities. Let's pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord our God, by the power of this sacrament, deepen our love and strengthen our faith. We celebrate the feast of St. Patrick. Bind us more and more to each other in unity and in peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well, always and everywhere, to give you thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. In your mercy, you sent Patrick to the peoples of Ireland to bring them to the faith. Through his prayers, May we in our lifetime also witness to the truth of your gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of glory. All sun and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All sun and the highest. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, for we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And so, most loving and holy Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body will be given up for you. In the 
similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, he gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Dying in the name of the Lord, Christ in the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus, my Lord. So, most loving and holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial, Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, Proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whom body and blood we have communion. And so, <clears throat> and so, having called us to a table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Tom and Vincent our Bishop, Malcolm our Archbishop, and all your priestly people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust in you. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope and peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have made. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them a fullness of life. Grant also to us and our earthly pilgrimages day, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Paul of the Cross, St. Joseph and all the saints, who shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, O Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus taught us to call God our Father. So we have his encouragement to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day, so that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Each other a sign of his grace.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, Lord I am not worthy to be Prayers of St. Patrick, may we remain faithful to your gospel to the end of our lives. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Amen. May Almighty God bless and protect you now and always, and bring us safe to Easter and the end of this dreadful affliction. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mark. Again, it's so good to see you all. <coughs>